In this video, we want to prove that the limit as x approaches 2 of x cubed minus 3x squared plus 6 is equal to 2 using epsilon delta. So first let's assume that the absolute value of x minus 2 is greater than 0 but less than delta, where delta is greater than 0. And let's consider the absolute value of the function minus the limit. So the function was x cubed minus 3x squared plus 6. The limit was 2. Subtracting those, we get x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4. From here, we can factor it out as x minus 2 times x squared minus x minus 2. We had let delta be greater than the absolute value of x minus 2, which is greater than 0. So you can think of this as the x minus 2 comes out as an absolute value. And then you have the x squared minus x minus 2. The absolute value of x minus 2 is less than delta. And then you just copy over the x squared minus x minus 2. So let's assume that delta is less than or equal to 1. And so we're going to consider the absolute value of x minus 2 to be less than delta and less than or equal to 1. The idea is delta has to be something small. So you're assuming it's less than or equal to 1. So now, here we're just ignoring the delta here. And we have x minus 2. The absolute value of that is less than 1, which means x minus 2 has to be between negative 1 and 1. Adding 2 to all three sides, we get x is between 1 and 3. So think of it like 3 is an upper bound, 1 is a lower bound. Okay, so this is what we have so far from before. And using the triangle inequality, the absolute value of x squared minus x minus 2 is less than or equal to the absolute value of x squared plus the absolute value of x plus 2. Basically, you're taking the absolute value of each term and making it positive. Now, we said x was between 1 and 3. So because you want the, mo the biggest value, plug in 3. So if 3 squared plus 3 plus 2 is 14. So now this part was less than delta. And this part is less than 14. So delta times 14 gives you 14 delta. And so that's going to equal epsilon. So then dividing both sides by 14, delta will be epsilon over 14. But recall, we said delta was less than or equal to 1. So we're going to take the minimum of 1 and then epsilon over 14. OK, now we can start the proof. So let epsilon be greater than 0, and then choose delta to be the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 14. And assume that the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than delta and greater than 0. OK, so now we start with our function minus our limit. So this was um, simplified already. So th this was basically x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4, which is um, x minus 2, and then x squared minus x minus 2. So then x minus 2 is less than delta. So this is less than delta, this part right here. And then you multiply it by the absolute value of x squared minus x minus 2. So that's how I came with this uh, step. And then remember, we said x was between 1 and 3 because if x minus 2, the absolute value of x minus 2 was less than delta, less than or equal to 1. So it had to be between 1 and 3. And then remember, using the triangle inequality, we said that x squared minus x minus 2 is less than or equal to 14. So now this thing which I should write it like this, x minus 2, x squared minus x minus 2. This part is less than or equal to 14. This part is less than delta. So multiply those is 14 delta. And delta, we said, was the minimum of 1 and epsilon over 14. But um, yeah, we just plug in epsilon over 14 here. The 14's canceled, and we got epsilon. Okay. And that completes the proof.